Hello, hello, everybody. It is 10.29 a.m. Central Time on the 23rd of October, 2020. It's Friday here in the United States, and I hope you're doing well. We are here again to talk about seismic events. And if you're a new viewer, let me first of all welcome you in, but let's get a display capture turned on so you can see what I see. And we're using Earthquake 3D, the program which you can get a free copy of or a paid version of. I don't get anything for recommending it. I use it every day, and we stream it live on Twitch. If you're watching on Twitch, word up, much love. If you're watching on YouTube, you're probably watching it as a premiere or a playback. Word up to you guys there, too. So let's dive into the deep end. We have a new Deep 6, 6.1, that came in here just north of the Kermadec Islands. We have Fiji and Tonga in here. Over to the west, we have New Caledonia, just as a point of reference. And a deep six hammering in on the underside of the plate. Let me show you what I think is going on here. Down below the plates, I think in the magma, down below the plates, a concentric wave is forming on the curvature of the underside of the plate. And where the waves come together, they focus into what's called a singularity or a spike, which then hammers in and up. It can't compress into the fluid much, obviously. And this is the fluid of the magma, I think, would be where this is happening. And when that happens, then the hammering action begins on the underside of the plate. And in this case, we look for a shallower, larger earthquake or a noteworthy spread to go out and away from this. Again, just like that hammering action that I showed you, up, out, and away. And when it spreads out and away, I believe standing waves are forming in the plate boundaries, which I'll show you the plate boundaries in a second, but... Just as these waves rise, you see how they're uniform in the tank? Instead of getting sloshing around and disorganized, the waves combine into what's called a standing wave. And as the wave moves, each wave height or pinnacle fills in the previous valley right in the middle point. Watch this. As it moves through the tank, again, I could just park my mouse over the center point, and each wave moves and fills in the other's previous fulcrum point, or that middle point between the waves. And as that spreads out, it's dropping off, I think, same-sized earthquakes all the way across the planet as it spreads out following these plate boundaries that I mentioned, which we can see here on the USGS plate boundary map marked in red. So we have a hammering action coming up on the underside of the plate here below Fiji, Tonga, and so forth. And then it spreads to the west, to the north, up and around over into Alaska, and then into the United States that way. Also spreads to the west over across through Nepal and western China, following the plate boundaries all the way over to Europe. And then third way it spreads is over across the Pacific, but you don't see any red lines going across the Pacific, at least on the USGS map. We have two giant arrows indicating where we watch for energy to flow across. So this new six that struck on the stair-step fracture zone heading down towards South Chile. This is about 1,300 miles west of Chile, or about 900 miles east-southeast of Easter Island, which is just this little speck of a dot out here north of the Arrow. Now, Easter Island belongs to Chile, so, I mean, we could call these Chilean waters, if you will, but I think 200 miles is the extent it goes off the coast with the actual international waters, whatever. It's off the western coast of Chile. And let's go look at it on the plate boundary map again. Look at this. This is where it is. And the other earthquake striking at the pinnacle tip down to the east-southeast. So it's like a stair-step fracture zone that leads back to our spot where we have our southern arrow. Now the southern arrow was already saturated because our letter X was hit down here just a day ago. And we go back two days before that and a previous earthquake struck. And they're both 5.4s. We're showing everything 0.0, .0 or 2.0 and greater. And again, two 5.4s, both fracture zones like two highways traced back to where our deep earthquakes came hammering in on the underside of the plate. So it's 5.4s down to the south X, 6s across, think of these like trains going across a bridge. And at the end of the bridge, we have actually a mountain that the train's going to hit. Now it's going to go around the mountain as opposed to through it, of course. If you're in a train, you're going to derail. And the rail is this stair-step fracture zone that goes down to the south by southeast. Let's go back to the USGS map. This would be the rail of the train. So it's nearing where it's going to make an impact and go down and around towards the southeast tip of the South Sandwich Islands. 
I would expect large activity between where our sets of earthquakes are. So where all three sets of rings overlap, I mean, that's one of the most famous earthquake zones on the planet, where one of the largest, I think the largest in recorded history took place back in 1960. 9.5. Okay, so deep earthquake hammering in here, spreading out and away, and we have sixes going across this way, which means, stands to reason, we should see new sixes pop off the other way, and additionally, this can cause a larger earthquake than 6.1. One magnitude larger. Up to. So that could put us up into the 7 range, which we are already watching for. And so far, we've had spreads of 5s, which is way low. This is our second deep 6 in the last two weeks. Something's going on down below the plate here in the West Pacific. Spreading out in a way from there, a 4.3 struck at New Caledonia. 5.1 struck in the middle open area here between our other sets of earthquakes. Look at it this way. 4.2 and a 4.3 on this side. A 4.3 on this side. And then in the middle point, that fulcrum point, a 5.1. A bigger earthquake in the middle. And the bigger earthquake struck first. Now that means there's an open area here that has a middle point between these two sets of quakes. And we have an open area here as a middle point between these two sets of quakes. Both are going to be filled in, most likely by something larger than what the 5.1 is, because we have, again, this hammering action coming in from the underside of the plate. One second, folks. Hold on one moment. I just had a little sneeze there, a little coffee sneeze. Cough and sneeze, not coffee sneeze. Ah, sip of my coffee while we think about that. Now, going up to the north, we have a 4.7 that struck yesterday. Right next to Taiwan, our warned areas from Taiwan to Okinawa. First, Okinawa got hit. Then the area between Taiwan and Okinawa got hit. And I told you to watch for the same sized activity on both sides of the plate boundary. And what do we have over to the east? Well, the northernmost earthquake is a 4.7. Why does that matter? Look what struck on the west side. 4.7. So that's the, again, middle point. Now we have a new middle point that should be filled in. And that's here on the coast of Japan. A three already struck next to Tokyo. I would look to the north, right on the north side, coast of Honshu, south of Hokkaido, right at the bend in the plate. And it should be something bigger than what's on both sides. Over in China, that five yesterday. Today, new mid-range fours going over into north Pakistan. And mid-range fours yesterday between Caspian Sea and Black Sea. Caspian Sea is on the east side here and Black Sea is on the west. But I have to talk about this. So yesterday, a deep or deeper, 120 kilometer deep, 4.0 earthquake struck in Romania. Today, followed by a 3.4 up in Poland, following the arrows again perfectly. So out of Romania, going up into Poland. Additionally, a new 3.5. I believe that's Bosnia. Let's go make sure. Yep, Bosnia and Herzegovina. 3.5 right on the arrow. You see that? It goes back down across Montenegro, back down to Albania. Over to the west, central Italy moving and Campobasso moving. Two spots. There's a new spot in between the two. That's up here next to Milan. So we have to watch there. Already talked about that in my previous updates. If you're from Italy, we're watching up north. North side, next to Milan. Oh, and the size, up to four-ish range. So, so far you're at, what, twos? You have two more magnitudes to go. Uh, what else happened? This happened yesterday, a 5.1 struck on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, but you can trace this back over to Nunavut, Alaska, or Nunavut, Canada, right at the tip of our arrow here, up in the Northern Hemisphere. Let's go back across and go over to Central America, where... Off the coast of Mexico, we have new fours and new threes going up into the Baja California, it's a Gulf of California Peninsula. Over to the east, the number of earthquakes actually has started to go down over to the east. Now, I still have not seen the release here. We're looking to Jamaica and Cuba. Previously, Cayman Island got hit and Honduras got hit. There's also been eruptive activity that I think we should probably talk about at this point. We'll start right here as the example. Fuego and Pacaya Volcano, both erupting in Guatemala. 
And let's just go look at the plate boundary list here again. There we go. So looking at it this way, right where the plate boundaries come together, that's where the two volcanoes are erupting. Up to the north, Mexico City, Popocatépetl, also erupting. But I would like to go check the list because other volcanoes showed up in the past couple days, like this one, Bezimiani, up in Kamchatka with a 30,000-foot-high blast. Now, before that gets too alarming sounding to you guys, we see 20 and 30,000-foot-high blasts from these volcanoes up in the Kamchatka Peninsula regularly. So when they erupt, it tends to be bigger eruptions, or it could be that they're just sending the blasts straight up because of the shape of the volcanoes at the location. That also could be possible. Let me show you where those are. Right up here. So a 30,000 foot high blast is nothing to scoff at. Bezimiani, Karimsky, Kluchevskoy, Shivalush, all going in the past couple of weeks, as well as Ebico down here right to the south. So that's a lot of volcanic activity in this little tiny area in the Northwest Pacific, which if we go back on the plate boundary map, let's just go over here and take a look at it this way, here. So that just ties in with the West Pacific because we get down to Japan, we have some eruptions right here. We get down to Indonesia, we have eruptions here. We go back around where the plate boundaries meet, we have eruptions here at Java. So every spot where there's a little break in the plate boundary here, we seem to be seeing new volcanic activity that's increasing just as a point of reference. Now let's go back over, over to Alaska, where this week we had a 7.5 earthquake and swarm break out along with a tsunami that took place around the area. Since then, a spread of earthquakes still taking place on the actual fault that broke, which is the plate boundary as well. Let me show it to you. Right up here on the peninsula of Alaska. But since then, a noteworthy line of earthquakes has gone right up across the mainland of Alaska. Watch this. Wait for this to refresh. There we are, and let me turn the rings down. That's 48 hours worth of earthquakes. So it's a fair amount, and they're going right up across Anchorage and all sides of Anchorage, past Mount Denali, where our biggest bunch of the earthquakes are, 3.7. Then going up to the north, making a line right up to our drill points, right up at the North Arctic Circle the northern slopes of Alaska. And the drill points are up at Prudhoe Bay. I've shown those many times. We're not going to get too deep into the drill points. But the earthquakes go right up across Alaska like a ramp, jumping off of the plate boundary. Let's go back and look at it this way. Coming up, jumping and carrying right on. And look at the spacing on these quakes. Do you see that? It's like connect the dots across Alaska. Well, that's going into the northern part of the Craton. Now, in between where our big earthquake was and down in the United States, we have hot spots that started to appear here in Canada, BC, on land east of the Hecate Strait at the volcanic fields there. And we talked about that in my previous update just a few hours, I guess, so less than a day ago. We're not seeing any hot spots there now. That was yesterday. We have to wait till today later on in the day to get today's feed and see what's going on. Now, on the coast of the United States, we have a fair amount of activity that's taking place now, as well as threes out in the ocean striking on the 21st. But I need to turn on the last day's worth of earthquakes here. 0, 0.0 and greater, 24 hours worth of quakes. So this matters. The reason we look, by the way, the reason we look at one day's worth of earthquakes it tells us the areas that are currently moving and the areas that are about to move. So just looking across the country, for instance, you might see we got ourselves an East Coast earthquake, right? How about right next to New York? Like 50 miles outside of New York City. Just north of Yonkers, New York. And the depth on this earthquake is down at 8.7 kilometer depth. So the only thing associated with this the edge of the Craton. No doubt about it, too, because over on the edge of the Craton, over in New York, let me just show you. The east edge of the North American Craton, the earthquake striking somewhere right up in here at Merritt Park. I could pull the coordinates, but it, I mean, west of Stanford, Connecticut, right in here, north of Yonkers. And the earthquake striking, really, 
it's on the edge of the craton, like I just said. Let me turn off all the borders and labels so you can even see this. All of this, it's the eastern edge of the craton, and it's been displaced over the past week and a half, two weeks. We have to go back just about a week and a half, two weeks. Pennsylvania got hit. Virginia, the North Carolina border got hit. Ohio got hit. Do you guys remember? Hotspots going across Virginia. Hotspots going across Maine, all the way up here in southeast Quebec, right at the split in the Craton to the northeast. All those hotspots. All those earthquakes. Now the east edge of the Craton starts moving. I wouldn't be surprised if people start reporting mystery booms and rumbles over on the east coast since it's shifting. And it's evidenced by the earthquakes. This is just 24 hours. If we look at the whole week, you'll see a big cluster up there going all the way up to Maine, which I showed in yesterday's update, by the way. Do you want to see it now? Here, hold on. Hold on. 0.07 day feed. And this is going to show a perfect line of earthquakes going across the Craton Edge, by the way, in the last week. Look at this. Seven days worth of earthquakes. Let's turn off all the magnitudes. And we need to turn the rings down a little bit. There. Okay. So, West Coast, I mean, it's pretty obvious. All of our shifting going on on the West Coast, this is just, again, this is seven days worth of earthquakes. But you should be able to see this. Right in the tip of our arrow, we have a cluster in Idaho. The other arrow, this is like an arrow itself here, pointing to the east, is it not? And it goes back to where our cluster is at California's Nevada border. And then a line of earthquakes going down where all our shifting is, but the spacing on these is virtually perfect all the way across Oregon. And then diagonal lines of quakes going down through California, all trying to go across to the edge of the craton. Which it does. Look, the northwest. Coming out of Montana, this is one week's worth of quakes. Going down into Yellowstone Park, and then carrying on further down through, and we don't have anything in Colorado except for huge fires, which themselves are on the edge of the Craton. Then we get down to the south. We make a bend through Texas. That's where we really pick up in earnest with the rest of the quakes. Now, remember what I told you. You'd see a little cluster up here on the east coast. Well, we're not let down. Take a look. Maine, New York. And this is just the USGS feed, guys. Uh, they do omit and miss some of the earthquakes up in Canada, for instance. So it's a perfect match for the edge of the Craton. There's no doubt about it going down through Texas, back to Oklahoma, back to the New Madrid seismic zone, up the east coast to Maine. I have to take the time to show that to you, by the way. A uh, professional said it wasn't possible. And I'll teach them, look at it now, guys. Do you still think it's not possible? The professor, the geophysics medal winner, who said this was all chance or coincidence. I wonder what he thinks now. Actually, we don't need to find out. That's irrelevant what they think anymore. Okay, so 24 hours worth of earthquakes. Oh, oh, hold on. Got another little cough coming here. Hold on. Wow. Okay, sip of coffee. Hold on. Man. No, it's not COVID. Dang, guys. Don't even use that in the chat room. Are you trying to get me banned or something? No, no, it's okay, guys. Seriously, it's not. And if I thought it was, I would go, you know, get things checked out. But it's not. It's just the seasonal. This happens to me every year. So that's how I know it's not. Every year, exactly in the middle of October, all of a sudden, my whole voice falls apart. My nose gets stuffy. My eyes start to water. And it's ragweed. That's my allergy is to ragweed. So whatever, we'll get through it. It's okay. Don't worry too hard on me. So now that we've cleansed the palate on the earthquakes for the rest of the planet, let's go over here and go on the west coast of the United States. We're going to start in the Pacific Northwest. So here's the deal. West Coasters, you guys got to listen right now. Everybody on the west coast wants to know when an earthquake is coming. I haven't met one person that doesn't want to know when the next round is coming in or what to look for. I'm going to show you how to watch yourself. And of course, you can come back here if you want to get the info. But there are methods that you can follow yourself to see what's coming our way. 
So for instance, I'm showing you 24 hours worth of earthquakes right now. You can do this yourself using a copy of Earthquake 3D. Look at 24 hours worth of earthquakes from the USGS 0.0 and greater. It'll show you everything that's moved in the last day from them, which lets us know the next spots to watch for movement to come in. So if you've been following along with me over the past few days, first of all, you know that we were shifting up here in the Northwest. And I say we're shifting, I'm speaking in a past tense on this, because it started to die down in the past few days. Let's go see what they show for yesterday, the 22nd. 237 epicenters. Now, wait a second. That's a slight increase from where we were the day before. Let's go back to the day before, before we do anything else. Go back to the 21st. 134, right? But look where they are. They're across southwest Washington going into Oregon and a little cluster down in California. So we'll move forward to yesterday or to last night and you'll see it's actually spread. It's gone down into Oregon more with a separate pocket west of Portland. And another pocket, that same pocket that was down in California, has started to develop and grow in the number of tremors. Now there's a corresponding point to this down in California, out in the ocean. And there's a corresponding point here in southwest Washington and west of Portland, out in the ocean. But let's go back even a few more days. Let's go back to like the 19th. Well, look at that. Our cluster is mainly in Washington, hardly at all in Oregon. And it's in Southwest Oregon, not in California. So I need to just keep going back now. Let's go back to like the 11th. There we are, 600. And they're only centered in Washington, right? So let's go turn on our imagery and show you what the corresponding point out in the ocean. This is Washington State. This is Oregon. This is Northern California. And look at the USGS map here. Do you see the Juan de Fuca fracture zone out here with its pinnacle jagged points? The pinnacle jagged points belong to the Pacific Plate. Pacific Plate's in motion. We know that, obviously, with all the earthquakes coming in along the plate boundary. For instance, up to the north. In Alaska, 7.5 and tsunami this week, right to the north. And a line of earthquakes coming right down to it, right down to here. 4.0 earthquake struck this week. Northern part of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Now, all this is shifting. Let's go back to the map. Here it is on the 11th, shifting, Washington. Let's go forward to the 12th. Wow, it shifts in Washington some more, but it develops on the north side, up into Vancouver Island, where all the hot spots started to appear over the past few days. And I mean, it really is right next to where the hot spots are appearing, under this little island right here, and all the way across right here. So it really is a perfect match to where the hot spots started to appear. This is on the 12th now. This is you know, a week and a half ago. But look up to the north. Here's our jagged pinnacle northern tip of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Points right in to where the shimmying and shaking and tremoring and hot spots are taking place across Vancouver. It's a match. So the pinnacle tip of the north side of the Juan de Fuca is pointing into where we're shifting here. And the southern pinnacle northern tip is pointing into Washington. There is no debating that. Right here, over into Washington where it started to shift across the Olympic Peninsula, Strait of Juan de Fuca, Puget Sound, going right down to the Washington border. Now, let's go forward another day. This is from the 12th to the 13th. Well, I'll be darn, look at that. It shifted down to the south. It left Vancouver Island, the shifting and shimmying and shaking and vibrating, and went down to the south with all the little red dots down in Northern California, Southwest Oregon. But look, here's our southernmost pinnacle point pointing into Southwest Oregon. And this is the southern arm of the Juan de Fuca that goes down into California and makes a bend down here. Remember that, because now we're going to go forward another day. Watch this. Back to the north, only in Washington. Now, why did I tell you to remember northern California? Well, well, hold on. Make a liar out of me here. I have to go forward, forward, forward. Forward a few more days. Sorry. There we go. So starting back on the 20th, down in California, right at the corresponding point to the south, we started to pick back up. So it's been going for two weeks, but in the spots where we're shifting, Washington, Oregon, Northern California, matching with these points. And that brings me back to current tilt today. So we get to the 22nd, and look, Northern California has started to shift and shimmy here. Now, when I look at this, I have to bring up something else. 
all sorts of viewers contacting me about something that's been in the news in the past day, not even, released this morning. This morning in the news, something about an area west of Portland. West of Portland. Hmm, what's going on west of Portland? Let's go see. Portland earthquake. And let's refine the search for the last 24 hours. Well, this is two days in a row now where I go to look for something and it's not coming up when I'm searching it and it should be in the news. It's troubling. It's troubling, guys. Should just come up. It came up when I searched out in the garage. Sure did. No doubt about it. Did it out in the garage. Pulled it right up. 24 hours. Should pull it right up. Hey, there it is. Live science right here, top front and center, four hours ago. Live science. Fault near Portland could unleash a major earthquake. But the quakes recur only every few thousand years. And look, they have this thing turned sideways. Here's Oregon's coast. This thing... Hold on. Let's go pull up Oregon's coast how it should look, all right? Let's not turn it sideways so everybody, nobody knows what they're looking at. Okay, here we go. And let's turn on our borders and labels too so that there's no question. Here's the coast of Oregon, right through here. Now on their thing, they got it turned sideways. Oh, dang. Look at, it. Oh, look at all these subscription things. A fault near Portland, Oregon has the capacity to cause strong shaking in the region has done so as recently as a thousand years ago. New research into the Gales Creek Fault, which lies 22 miles west of Portland, reveals that earthquakes on the fault have ruptured the surface three times in the last 9,000 years. Today, the fault is capable of producing an earthquake up to magnitude 7.1 to 7.4, which would create very strong shaking and damage property and potentially threaten lives in the Portland metro region. Fortunately, big quakes on the fault are rare. Researchers reported on October 20th in the Bulletin of Seismological Society of America. They recur every 4,000 years or so as a rough average. So there's no evidence that the fault is currently at high risk of rupture. Oh, really? How far west of Portland was that? Hey, what, what's our key on here for mileage? Hey, here we go. 10 miles right there. Look at this is our key for mileage. 10, 20. 20 miles west of Portland. Look what we have. And you know what? I'm going to get the coordinates on this and we're going to measure it from downtown Portland to see if it really is 20 miles or if that's 40 or 50 miles. Does it really matter whether it's 20 miles or 40 and 50 miles when we're talking about the plate breaking and shifting and them talking about 7.0 range activity? Okay, let's go find out. Here's the tremor location. Here's Portland. It, it, that's over 20 miles. It is. It looks like it. Let's see. From downtown Portland. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It's 26 miles, guys. You know. Oh, yeah. Way over. Way over. Uh, too far away, Dutch. <laughs> it's 26 miles, guys. Okay. Now, threat of a big earthquake up there. Well, this is another case of the professionals talking about the threat of a large earthquake without giving any actual warning and just stoking the fears of everybody. Saying there's no threat, but it happens every thousand years. Why even talk about it then? Why not publish it in the, the Journal of Thousand Year Studies or something? Wait, that doesn't exist. So we have shifting, shaking, tremoring, and vibrating as the plate is shifting right here with all these little red dots. This is as of last night. Down in California, same thing. And both points match the pinnacle tips of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone, which is shifting. The professionals said we were in a slow slip. Mainstream media did articles on it over the past couple weeks. They're trying to backtrack that now. But the reason they're trying to backtrack that is because the big earthquake struck up here and the professionals said large earthquakes aren't related to slow slips. <laughs> and they put it in writing. Dirt. That'll teach them. Internet age, man. It never goes away. Okay. Now, let's go down across Washington State. 
So we're in the Puget Sound, Strait of Juan de Fuca. Actually, that's the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Up here, right along water. Let's go see what's going on there. Anna Cortez, Washington. Anna Cortes? Anna Cortez? Anna Cortes. It's quite literally at the tail end of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone going into the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Over to the east by southeast, we're on a thing called the Seattle Fault. And the Seattle Fault goes, of course, right through Seattle across the Puget Sound over to the Olympic Peninsula. Let's see if it actually will come up on the fault map here. Yeah, there it is. This thin red line going through Seattle. Now you see how it connects over to the Olympic Peninsula. The Olympic Peninsula. Hot spots, geothermal hot spots showing up out of the forests and going up into BC and Vancouver Island. Nobody can tell me it's farmers burning their fields in the middle of a pine forest. But that's what's going on there. Hey, we might even be able to go see it now. Let's go see if there are any showing up last night into today. By the way, good news in Colorado. Some snow came rolling in from Nederland all the way up into Wild Basin, which is great news. That will put a little kibosh on the fire. Won't completely knock it out, though. Okay, well, let's go up in the northwest, see if we can even see anything. Look at the cloud cover there. Okay, we might not be able to see anything up here because of the cloud cover. So thick. That means rain and heavy precipitation, though. Oh, okay, well, you can still see a few of these. We got a few black splotches up here at the Canada border. Let's just see if they get put out. Dream. Oh, no, wait, here's one you can see down here at the Olympic Peninsula as well. It's kind of flickering on and off as a dark splotch there. And then our clouds come rolling in. And then they cut the satellite. Oh, by the way, they're cutting the satellite every night now to aid in the cooling issues of the, they're having what goes west. And all of a sudden, those beams start showing up. They have an overheating issue. So, yeah, we've got ourselves major cloud cover. I'm not going to be able to see one way or the other. Let's go further to the north, though, and just take a quick gander, see if there's anything going on. Gander. Uh, anything going on east of Haida Gwaii last night or today if we can oh wow hold on yeah look at that it's showing through the cloud cover major hot spot activity east of Haida Gwaii over here in Vancouver look at that the snow coming in and everything snow and rain and it's showing through that again this is Haida Gwaii Hecate Strait Vancouver BC so, all right. Well, we're not going to get any good imagery through that. Let's go down to the south because I think you guys do need to see what happened here in Idaho last night. So, last night, look at this. Watch this. It looks like a Christmas tree lighting off across the region just here in north-central Idaho, right on the Craton Edge. And we could get a close-up shot of this if you guys can't see this on your phone. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Let's go over here into north Idaho. And we're just going to look right through here. You should hopefully be able to see this. This is not farmers burning their fields either, guys. This is related to the plate shifting. Watch this. Again, it's flickering on and off at the top of the screen. This is Idaho. And look at Washington. These are five-minute frames. So we go two frames. And the hotspot, for instance, in Washington just goes on. And then... Just poof, it's gone within two to three frames. That's gone within 15 minutes, guys. And now they're flickering on and off over in Idaho. That's bursts of heat. And then they kill the satellite overnight. That is hilarious. Okay, let's go down across Oregon here and just take a quick look and see if anything else is showing. Again, last night, noteworthy hotspot flares up in Oregon. You can see that black splotch there. Goes for, let's see, an hour? Two hours, three hours, four hours. And then by the morning, it's dying down a little bit. Hold on. We have a hot spot in California, something of which I've never seen before. And nothing looking like this before. Let's go see what that is. What is that? The heck? I don't know what to make of this one, guys. Hold on. I don't even know if this is a hot spot. I've never seen anything like this. Look up here in Northern California, right here. Do you see this? Just watch this. It just goes away. 
Do you see that? It's hot and then goes away. What is there? It's definitely showing up as hot. And I'm talking about this right here. It just quite literally is hot, but not fire hot. Let's go see what's there. Let's turn on our borders and labels and county lines. This should help us. Yeah, this should be pretty easy to triangulate this location. Here's our northernmost county in California at the center. And then there's the pinnacle tip of the southern counties to the south of it. And we're just to the east northeast of that. I have no clue what's there. Let's go see. Might not be anything there. Okay, here's our county lines. No way. Guys, look, 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 everybody. Okay, hold on. Look. Sometimes I'll find stuff and I don't know what it means. Sometimes I find stuff and we do know what it means. But we have to look it up to figure out what's going on. This is pretty straightforward. A hot spot, but not as hot as a fire, showing up and the only thing at the location is Mount Shasta itself. And the size of the hot spot appears to be the size of the volcano. Look at it. That is that is the size of the volcano. It doesn't appear to be the size of the volcano. That is the size of the volcano. Now, just wait a second. So this is yesterday going into last night. Here's last night. Fades away. And here's this morning. Oh, 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 oh. Starting to get hot again right now in the most current frame. It is. It's starting to show is hotter than around the entire area. Let's go and see if it's showing on GOES. I've got the GOES fireplace marks turned on. It doesn't have any fires detected on it or anything. There's no fires detected on it. It's just hot. It's just warm. Mount Shasta is warming up. There's no debating that. It's showing on satellite and it's fading away. So here it is again last night. I mean, look at watch it. Here, watch it fade away. Look at that. You know, I'm also seeing something down here to the south. This is the camel-shaped county that we've talked about so many times. Here's Lake Tahoe, and we're between the camel-shaped county and the county to the west. Let's go see what's there, because that's showing up as a, a warmer area as well. Let's go see what's there. I think I know what's there. I'm pretty sure I know what's there. I just don't want to pronounce it unless I really know for sure. Yep, and we even got a hot spot there from September 10th. So last month, there were fires that were there. But look where we are. We're right across the area where the fires were and Paradise, California is. And this is where all the fires were. Were there fires on Mount Shasta that I just don't know about? That could leave a remnant heat trace up to the north? We got to pay attention to that, guys. Look, if we didn't have this going on right here, look, look where the tremors are happening. Here are the tremors from last night. Here is Mount Shasta. Well, here, uh, let me get it up. Mount Shasta is right here. Let's turn on the USGS imagery. There it is. Here is Mount Shasta. Here are our tremors. The plate boundary comes in from the west and makes a bend down to the east-southeast. Let's show it to you on the USGS plate boundary map now. The plate boundary comes in and goes down to the east-southeast. Mount Shasta is right up here. And you see which way the faults connect up along the coast to the spots that are shimmying, shifting, and shaking with all the tremors. Keep in mind, Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens both had seismic activity in the past couple days. Today, they're showing nothing. And Yellowstone has died out. We had a bunch of earthquakes down here in Yellowstone or over here in Yellowstone. And now that's died out. Over here in Idaho, also the number of earthquakes has died out. So the number of earthquakes, the frequency, has gone down in the Pacific Northwest so far, while the shimmying and shaking and shifting has now picked back up again with 200-something tremors as of yesterday, which again, like I said, is an increase from 100-something. But the spots are shifting, which means if it's shifting, and the mainstream media just put out an article about something 20 miles west of Portland and 26 miles west of Portland is where we pick up with our tremors here does that mean a large earthquake's coming? They're just not wanting to tell us? I don't know. 
I'm watching and waiting myself. So we wait with the slow slip. The slow slip interferes with our normal flow going across the Craton and down into California. We're looking at 24 hours worth of earthquakes, right? Yes, this is 24 hours worth of 0.0, .0 and greater. So a few things have happened over the past few days. The number of earthquakes started to increase in California. We call that a frequency increase. The magnitudes behind it, eh, twos and threes, pretty low. But the frequency increase has reached all the way down to Southern California with a new noteworthy swarm outbreak at Salton Sea. And we have to remember what happened here just a few days ago. Like three or four days ago, there was a hot spot outbreak across Southern California. And steam came up with that. I recorded it in a video and I shared the links to everybody so they could all watch along with me live on satellite. We all witnessed it together. Hot spots and steam coming from the geothermal location down here south of Salt Sea at the volcano. Now the volcano itself is getting hit with a swarm. It's not the only volcano getting hit in California. We have a new swarm breaking out at, or next to, Pisgah Crater out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. So two volcanoes are swarming next to each other. And I'm not exaggerating. Ludlow, California, Pisgah Crater, right across the highway, where our steam plume appeared in the desert in July of 2011. On a clear day with not a cloud in the sky, steam picked up on radar came from this location I'm about to show you. The USGS freaked out about me making a video and they issued a press release about my video, denying it, trying to say the steam picked up on radar was a thunderstorm. There was a problem with that. On visible satellite, it's clear, not a cloud in the sky. And it went on for three days out of the same location here, east of Pisgah Crater. Steam now, water. And by day two, they deleted their press release about me, which said it was a thunderstorm. Because obviously, it can't be a thunderstorm. It's coming from the ground. It's from three days in a row. And it's going all day and night. Obviously not a thunderstorm. And so they deleted it and just kind of left it. Well, a couple of weeks after that, maybe three weeks later, a 5.0 earthquake struck right next to the volcano. Now here we are, and we're right across the highway. And again, we are right next to Pisgah Crater, and it's swarming. Now I mentioned this was a volcano down in Southern California where the stack is. Neeland, Nyland. Well, didn't they downgrade that earthquake yesterday? It was like a 4.2 or something, and they came in and downgraded it to a 4, and then took it down to a 3.9. Why did they do that? Oh, they can't have too many fours down there. They have statistics to maintain. You get too many fours, it's going to throw everything off, make it look like an increase. And since there's an increase occurring, we can't acknowledge that either. So it's better just to pad the numbers, you know what I'm saying? So here we are, we're right next to Sultan Buttes. Sultan Buttes been drilled to get steam to turn these turbines. And the pipelines go out to drill points that have been drilled down a few hundred to a few thousand feet to get the steam. And the earthquake striking right next to another geothermal plant right here. And that's where the swarm outbreak is taking place, between the volcano and the geothermal drill points. That's where the swarm. And that's a new development. We did not have a swarm there yesterday. Now the line of earthquakes reaching down to the swarm goes right back up through East L.A. and to North L.A. So let's go up to North LA and take a good look what's up at Silmar, California. Anybody know what's at Silmar, California? Ah, uh, long time viewers, you guys should remember this. Let's get a drink of the coffee as we go along. Drink! Our drinking games consist of coffee, guys. Okay, so here's our earthquakes on the east side of the highway. And on the west side of the highway, we have a huge oil and gas pumping operation and storage operation. They're actually storing gas at some of these locations. Now, I seem to recall this area right here being in the news for something else. Let's just see how close it is. Aliso Canyon, L.A. Where is that at? Dang! It, it's... Quite literally right there. 
let me tell you a tragic story. Tragic, man. And this is seriously, this is... This is why I don't really like the people out in the professional world out in California. Several years ago, there was an earthquake swarm that broke out starting all the way over here. I want to say it started all the way over at the coast at Ventura. And it came across following these. You know what? Hold on, hold on. It actually started out in the ocean. Just if I'm going on memory here. So this is like six years ago or five years ago. These offshore drilling rigs. So they're getting oil and gas out here in the ocean. That's where the rigs start. Then we come up here onto land at a place called Muscle Shoals. And these are all drill points. These are all oil and gas wells. Let me just zoom in on one to get a shadow on one so you can see it. There we are. You can see the pump, hopefully. So the drill points start there out in the ocean. Then they go across and you can follow them. These are all drill points going through Ventura. Every one of them. And it carries on. So it carries on on a trail over to the east and it goes right through here and picks up on this side of the valley with all of these pumping operations. So earthquakes started to spread across here. And that's what that's how I even found this. And it's, oh, by the way, it's on both sides of here. It goes across this way and it goes up and around this way where all of this is drilled too. Okay. Now, that's just where we start. The earthquakes spread over to the east following these oil wells. So we keep going over to the east and look where we go. This is Aliso Canyon. So the earthquakes crept this way and I was documenting them the whole way. So like a week or two weeks leading over to this. And then a series of earthquakes struck right down below this area. I want to say it was right below the landfill or something, but it was right here. And I made videos on it. And a professional came out, Dr. Lucy Jones. She's apparently a top name in the industry out in California. I'd never heard of her before. And she came out, or maybe I had heard of her once. She used to go by the name Earthquake Lady, but I didn't know that was her then. Okay. Anyway, she came out and said that there was talk online about there being earthquakes and that there's no relation, uh, earthquakes at this location, and that there's no relation between the earthquakes down below and the drill points up above. Because the drill points don't go down as deep as the earthquakes, you see. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, it's a meet me halfway across the sky scenario. You know what I mean? So Mother Nature is coming up from underneath with pressure and power. Humans perforate up on the surface just with a scoring of the surface. Obviously, Dr. Lucy has never worked on a job site or done any kind of scoring with any kind of stone of any multiple layers or one layer or whatever or anything. Because everybody who works with stone, whether it's 10,000 miles thick or just a few inches thick, understands the concept of scoring something. Where you score the surface of something and it makes it easier to break because tension and power seeks out those weak points in mass, whatever it is. In this case, stone and thousands of layers of it, many miles thick. But the same principle applies. You go perforating an area all the way across it it's going to aid in seismic energy coming into it. So I made the videos. She came out and denied any relation between the earthquakes down below the location and what's up above it. The gas storage operation in this location, which was Aliso Canyon. And guess what happened? Within just a couple weeks of that, of her denial, and everybody giving me so much crap below my videos that were showing this, it blew up. It exploded. It released its gaseous contents out into Northern California. And let me show you what happened because of their denial. Lisso Canyon evacuations. Here it is. The massive... Look, they tried to blame corroded well lining. Corroded well liner. Dirt. It's five years ago. Corroded well liner. 100 days in 2015 and 2016, gas leaked out of the Lisso Canyon Natural Gas Storage Facility near Los Angeles. The largest known leak of methane in the United States history. More than 8,300 households were evacuated, and people exposed to the gas reported nosebleeds, dizziness, and respiratory problems. And that's just the upfront things that they're going to experience from that. This week, California regulators said they now know... Now, 
They now knew. Hold on. They now knew why the environmental catastrophe happened. What the heck? How could you now knew? In a 258-page report, investigators said that the groundwater had corroded the metal lining of more than a 50-year-old underground well, leading to its rupture at 892 feet below ground. The report also said that SoCal Gas, the company that owns and operates a natural gas well, did not meaningfully investigate or analyze more than 60, 60 previous leaks at the complex. The company did not properly monitor its wells at the site, the report said. Yeah, scapegoat. Scapegoat them. Blame the company. I get it. Never mind. Hey, hold on. When was that? 2015 oil earthquakes. Lucy Jones. Maybe that'll bring it up. Her denial. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, is this it? Oh, this is no. This is where she's denying the relation. This is where she's denying the relation. This is what it is. This this article is her denying the relation between. We are not seeing a change in the rate of earthquakes at oil pumping operations. Oh my God, we need to find the 2015 denials, man. Can't let her live it down, man. That was that that was to me that was just wrong. Okay, so I hate to take so much time on it, but that's where the earthquake is. Let's go down to the east by southeast. Corona, California. Oh, man. I got a letter from somebody from here. Somebody mailed me a letter on my birthday. And it was a, a pack. It was a big, thick envelope. And it was... I opened it up. Well, I didn't. My, my screener... <laughs> he opened it up. I'm right there with him. He opens it up. And uh, it's a, a birthday wish. And it says, Happy birthday! On a flashcard... And then it says something about here. Here's some information I figure people you wouldn't want people to have. And watch your back. And it was all my personal information, including my personal contacts, the last time they were seen at my house, uh, my personal cell phone numbers, not not public guys, my personal email addresses, the handles that I use online. Somebody had paid for a detailed search on me, uh, maybe a private investigator or something, and they sent the results to me on my birthday. And they're from Corona, California. Isn't that a great birthday present? Hey, look, speaking of presents, let me serve one back to you. Here's the earthquake epicenter, and look what's right next to it. You know, people in California talk a good game about environmentalism, but they're full of crap. Just straight up, another oil pumping operation. So you drilled the hell out of your oil pumping operations to the point where they're getting hit with earthquakes is going across the areas perforated. You've got volcanoes that are going, which you've drilled into to get steam to provide electrical power to the area. Out here at Pisgah Crater, you're doing gold mining, which I didn't even show. And then over here at Ridgecrest, you dug the hell out of the area and built huge secret bases down underneath the desert floor, which now got cracked and blown up or whatever happened out there. 7.0 earthquake. So up here to the north, we've got a super volcano at the California. <laughs> Hold on, let me get sip my coffee, man. Okay, out here at the California Nevada border, we have activity back at the super volcano and over to the west of it, where all the fires were. Now, Long Valley Caldera has been moving. We have a line of earthquakes coming down to it that lead back up to here. Do you see how there's three sets of quakes around Lake Tahoe? 1.5, 2.1, 1.1. And they go around this. If you were to connect this down, it would make a triangle shape where it connects across, right? Well, let's go show you what's there. Right here between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake, we have a triangle of earthquakes. And this oval shape is what I've talked about for years at this point. And hot spots have appeared around the outside edge of this. Earthquakes go around the outside edge of this, and in this case, earthquakes are going up into Pyramid Lake and down as far south as near Steamboat Springs. Pyramid Lake has volcanoes in it. This is the needles. These are the needles at Pyramid Lake, and it's a fumarole field, as well as old pillow lava formations. But over here on the west side, 
That's where all the fires broke out over the past several weeks and months. Now, wait a second. Here's that camel-shaped county that we were talking about a few minutes ago. There's Paradise, California. That's the hotter area that's showing there, but that all just burned. Up here, Mount Shasta. Do we have any earthquakes up there? No. No earthquakes up next to Mount Shasta. Instead, we have to go all the way out over to the east with the 2.7 in north central Nevada. Golconda, Nevada. A surface earthquake at Golconda. I've never heard of this location before, but it's a surface quake. What's going on there? Let's go see. Whenever you don't know a location, you got to look it up. So a surface quake kind of along the road here. Well, off the road. Anything else here nearby? Man, you want to talk about a remote location. Oh, wait. What? Dude, this is a huge mine. Look at the depth on this. That is an open pit mine of some kind. I wonder if we can get information on this. Let's turn on places too. Here we are. What is this? Open pit mines at Elko, Nevada. Nice little mine, as it says. Oh, cyanide heap leach gold mine. Gold mines. Now wait, hold on now. now. Now just wait a second. We've got the other earthquake swarm all the way out here at Pisgah Crater in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Right there. And that's a gold mine. Let me show it to you. So we're going from this gold mine in Nevada down to this gold mine. And it's significant earthquake activity. This isn't just small. This isn't like zeros and quarry blasts. This is going up into the three range. Kim Jong-un's nukes did fours. So here's the gold mine here at Pisgah Crater. And they got helicopter pad there and everything right on the side of the volcano for that gold mine. I mean, come on, how many gold mines are going to get hit in one day's time? This is just one day's worth of earthquakes. If this was like weeks or something, I would say, ah, it could be chance, but gold mines in the same day? What about here at the Utah border? St. George, Utah. This should bring us in next to Dutchman's Draw Volcano of all places. Let's go look up here in Arizona, the Utah border. There's the earthquake epicenter. And I mean, it really is. It's between Dutchman's Draw. Oh, wait. Do we have a quarry here? Wow, brand new airport. Got a lot of people out there, I guess, huh? We got going on there. Shipping. Shipping receiving going into the mountain, huh? <laughs> Looks like it, doesn't it? So we've got a cold storage area there. Okay. Well, anyway, we are directly next to Dutchman's Draw Volcano. I don't see anything else of any significance there nearby. Looks like we've got a little spring area right there. Oh, hang tight. Man, I want to sneeze so bad. It just didn't come. Dang. Okay, well, we're going to have to wait for that. It's just going to pop out. I'll be talking to you. I'll blow your eardrums. Oh, well. All right, let's carry on, shall we? So, looking at the West Coast, going as far south now as Arizona's border, and as far east as all the way over to Utah, seismic activity reaching over to volcanoes. There is no disputing that. So, volcanoes, drill points. Southern California pretty much dominating the locations. This swarm here, this swarm here, even this swarm up here, directly next to volcanoes. This here at Aliso Canyon. And then this little cluster of quakes down south that goes across the San Jacinto Fault. And this number of earthquakes is low. While this is high, this is low. And the force is coming across the Mojave Desert. That's the swarm out here in the middle. So let's connect from Ridgecrest down through Mojave down to Southern California. Let's do that. Let's go back to the USGS map. Hey, look, hold on. Let's hit refresh on this. Hold on. Ah, no, they've got a new earthquake reported out there right now. Hold on, when did this hit? 1038, 38 UTC. What time is it now? 
Why is that showing as the most recent? I'm hitting refresh. That's odd. That's really odd. That just doesn't make any sense. Okay, anyway, we can connect from up here, down across, and down to here. And it goes right across following the faults. I mean, it's a, it's a slam dunk. We go from up here, jumping across the Garlock, and back down to the south. It's bypassing all of L.A. While L.A. is getting hit at Aliso Canyon, for instance, or Corona, California, next to the pumping operations here. I didn't even mention that. Okay, so going back up to the west by northwest, let's just recap. A line of earthquakes around the supervolcano, or what I think is a supervolcano at least, between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. A line of earthquakes going down to the confirmed supervolcano at the California-Nevada border going over to Monte Cristo Hills where we flared up two days ago. Or a day ago. 24 to 48 hours ago it flared up here at the California-Nevada border. Then it flared up down to the south going through Ridgecrest as of yesterday. Now today we flared up all the way down south at the south pinnacle tip. Next stop, over to the east. Far west-northwest, California shifting, Oregon shifting, Washington shifting. There is no disputing that now. And if they are going to try and dispute it, they're going to have to fight with themselves what they said two weeks ago when it started to shift before the big earthquake hit. The denial about the relation between big earthquakes and slow slipping is going to have to stop. That's getting childish. It's getting very, very childish on the part of the people who are in denial. We can't take them serious anymore, quite frankly, so there's no point in debating them. The line of earthquakes comes down the creeping section of the San Andreas and stops right next to where we've shown so many times, pinnacles, another set of drill points. Where we're stopping along the San Andreas, they started to drill. They drilled the San Andreas. Do you guys know about that? Californians, do you guys know you guys drilled the San Andreas right next to it? Let me show you. Here's the earthquake epicenter. And going right across this little range, maybe a few miles at the most, you see where it says frack wells? Let's zoom in and show you. Well, here across the, the fields, but here in this field, for instance, there's several. But you have to zoom in to find them. There's two tanks, a burn apparatus, a pump or a jack right there for the oil. So it's not just fracking. And they're getting oil and gas out of these. Frack well, frack well, frack well, all the way across there. And we're right next to the San Andreas, quite literally where this is the San Andreas. And that's where our frack wells start. But it goes, that's just a few. That's just a handful. They're right across where the earthquakes branch off and come down and go over to the valley as opposed to carrying on down the San Andreas. All these tens of thousands of drill points here. Oil and gas again. And you see the pipelines that connect between all the oil wells. So this whole thing is drilled. This is where it starts. It follows the San Andreas. Again, here's the San Andreas. Drill points follow it on the interior of here, and they come right up to it. No exaggeration there. This is San Andreas. These are the drill points. And when I say there's tens of thousands, I am not exaggerating. The whole mountain range here done, too. So you've perforated again along an area where... Mother Nature normally pushes. And guess what happens? The energy comes down to where you started the perforation, and it jumps across the perforation and ends up back down where the perforation ceases. And then we pick back up at the gold mining, well, actually, you could even call it drill points of their own because they're going to be going down doing exploratory drilling to find those spots to then quarry from the surface. It all goes back up to the northwest where we are shifting. The East Coast and everywhere else, look, I mean, East Coast got hit over at New York yesterday. Uh, Texas got hit down at the pumping operations in West Texas. Perfect match on the edge of the Craton. And it all goes back up to the Northwest. So we're several days beyond our expected warning for California. Came and went. And nothing happened. Threes. Threes to 3.4. Come on. We're looking for upper fours to fives to come rolling into California. And mid-range threes come in. But guess what else carried on? The slow slip. The slow slip. Let's go back to the tremors. The little red dots. As of yesterday, California and southwest Washington going into Oregon. Now the mainstream media is suddenly putting out articles saying, 
well, every thousand years there's a big earthquake. That's so weird. Because the spot that they're listing is the spot that started to shimmy and shake today than these days. I'm not going to get ranting. I'm going to tell you right now. It's probably a good time to tell you. You should have an earthquake plan. You should know what to do when an earthquake strikes. That would probably be your best scenario. Just to know what to do. Take shelter underneath a table or a desk. You don't have to go through the whole run around and do the earthquake drill. Get underneath your table or desk and actually act it out. I would just think about where you're going to go. Have it set up beforehand that if anything's going to happen, you can get there pretty quick. And if you don't have confidence in your structure, let's say you work in a building that's made out of cinder block or you live in a brick house, well, you'll need to have an exit plan that gets out pretty quick. That means picking a door to go out ahead of time and having your emergency kit by that door. Now, the emergency kit you put together yourself. So it shouldn't cost you much. Change of clothes, set of shoes, flashlight, batteries, first aid, sanitation. These are all things you're supposed to have already. So put them into a bag. Have it ready to go. Okay. One other thing, Hawaiian viewers. Aloha. You got new activity out here, but this was a little bit more interesting. Maui. Maui. Up next to Kahulue. The volcano up there. Most people don't even know about it. And Hualalai up on the north side of the Big Island. Do you guys even know what I'm talking about? All the tourists there don't even know what I'm talking about. The people who live there don't even know what I'm talking about. Let's go up and show it to you. Hold on. Kahulawe, Maui. Doesn't normally get hit. It only gets hit when there's big time pressure coming into Hawaii. Oh, we'll show you. Hold on. Display capture turned on. There we are. Here we are on the Big Island of Hawaii. And here's Hualalai, here's Kohala, here is Kahulue, a separate little island off of Maui. So when you have activity up here around Maui, you have activity on the north side of the island between Kohala and Hualalai. Ko Kohala is even older. Look at Kohala. It's covered in trees only. Like there's no fresh craters on it. But coming off of it, there are apparently younger Spatter cones, like there's three right here. There's some a fourth over to the east northeast. They, they are visible, but they're covered in trees. They go down to the coast. This way. Okay, and that's where we are on the north side. But down to the south, the predominant. Look, we got to talk about this. It's been a few days worth, but look at the stack. Let me pull the most recent earthquake, which I think is a 2.9. Just struck. That's what led my eye here to begin with. Here we are. Coordinates. Wait, did they just downgrade the quake? They did. You gotta be kidding me. As I'm talking. All right, let's go pull the coordinates. 2.5, not a 2.9. And I can already tell you where we are. We're over here on the east side of the island. But it's a special feature. It's a special spot. Look where we are. We're right next to Kilauea's collapsed crater that's filling with water. You can see the lake. See this? That's a steaming lake down inside of Kilauea's crater. This used to be a lava lake. It drained out. It collapsed. And now it's just a pit in the ground. But down below it, all of this is the Middle East Rift Zone. It goes over to the side of Mauna Loa. And it goes down to the side of Loihi, and it pretty much encompasses the whole east-southeast side of the Big Island of Hawaii. And the Middle East Rift Zone was topped out by Kilauea, where you had a lava lake up on top. And like I said, it drained down and out. When it drained down and out, that's when the collapse happened. Now you're getting a swarm breaking out there. To me, a swarm says, that means it's recharging. That means it's refilling. And it's reaching a pinnacle point where it's reaching to a point where it's getting stressed and breaking the top. Let's get a side angle on this. Again, for my Hawaiian viewers, you guys already know about the island, but I'm showing everybody else. Here's Mauna Loa in the background, much further back, Mauna Kea. And then Kilauea is at the foot of Mauna Loa. And it goes down, and this is all the Middle East Rift Zone, the magma chamber that feeds it down below. This collapsed. 
and drained out over to the east, where a surface fissure formed and lava came out, flowed out over on this side for months. As it flowed for months, the lava level went down, 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 and guess what went down with it? The top. The top started to sink and break, collapsed down into it several thousand feet, a couple thousand feet down. So all of a sudden, we go down a couple thousand feet, and this whole thing's collapsed down into where the magma chamber is now smaller, I think. That the top has collapsed in. Now the magma chamber probably tops out somewhere right down in here, instead of up here at the top. So it tops out halfway through the Middle East Rift Zone. But the surging magma coming in from further down below has to go somewhere. It's coming into the former chamber that was formerly filled. That means it's going to go out to the sides. Where else could, can it go? It could go out through the top, but that would be a blast. And it's blocked with thousands of feet of rubble on top of it. Like a bottled cork in a bottle that's being shaken up. Eventually, that will blow. And it'll either blow on the side or at the top. It's happened so many times in the past. Let me just show you how many times. There's either blast calderas, or bl I'm sorry, blast craters, or collapsed calderas. But you can see the blast craters versus the caldera. So there are explosions that happen here, but it's every several hundred to thousand years that that goes on. Another earthquake has just struck there as I'm talking. It's starting to swarm. So we're getting a swarm in Hawaii all of a sudden. At Kilauea directly, there's no d doubting that. Look at that. Kilauea going down to the coast. Middle East Rift Zone. If this picks up and carries on, that means uh, it is recharging. It just depends on how long this goes on for. Now, we have hammering action. Where I started this whole update again. Let's take you back to where I started the update. The hammering action coming in on the underside of the plate. Guys, it plays into seismic and volcanic activity around the whole Pacific plate. You start getting big hammering action coming in on the underside of the plate anywhere over here in the West Pacific. Spreads over across up to Alaska. And guess who's in the middle? Hawaii. Let me take you back in time. When Hawaii collapsed and the lava flow started two years ago, same day that that collapse happened, Cleveland Volcano up here erupted. Up in the Alaskan Aleutian Island chain, which is pretty rare. Also, same couple day time period where when this collapsed, right here, we were having a major deep earthquake swarm all the way around the plate from Japan over to Afghanistan, all the way back down to Fiji. Just so many. There, were, there was hundreds of deep earthquakes that had happened in the course of a few weeks' time that then was followed by Hawaii having its big event and Cleveland volcano erupting roughly at the same time in the same day. Okay, that sums it up. Like I said when I started the update, sixes are coming across the plate down to the south. Predominance to the south. We got a new five striking down here to the south while I was basically talking. Or at least in the last six hours. <laughs> Depends on when they report it, right? And then over to the west, we have a spread going up towards Japan. We have a spread coming out of Alaska going into the United States. The United States is shifting. Oh, oh, oh my god, I forgot to tell everybody. Everybody, put on the... Put on the brakes! Put on the brakes! Let's go search the slow slip, the episodic tremor slip, ETS PNSN. Okay, <clears throat> now we need to search for the news articles on this since they tried to bury this. And let's just see what they said. So first of all, look at this. Hold on. A different story is now coming up. That one from September 16th. Yesterday, nothing came up. Now, all of a sudden, an old story comes up from a month ago. But here's the one I want to find. October 19th. Dude, they are doing their best to hide these stories, man. They're trying to hide it. Listen to what this is saying. This is released on the 19th, just a few days ago. New data shows Western Washington State and Vancouver Island might be ending their near annual shuffle away from the mainland. Seismologist John Cassidy with NR Canada, Natural Resources of Canada, they're the USGS of Canada, notes 
Western Washington State has moved between four to six millimeters away from the mainland over the past week. Four to six millimeters in the last week, pushing out towards the ocean, coming off of North America. This is them, guys. They admitted it. They tried to bury the story after this happened. This big earthquake happened, and they scrubbed their stories and tried to get it off the internet because they said there was no relation between large earthquakes and slow slips. Well, now they just tell us on the 19th, the di pretty much the day of the big earthquake in Alaska, that Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and Vancouver Island have moved four to six millimeters in a week. In a week. It's not months. It's not years. It, it's in a week. Do you think that's going to be responding with some seismic activity pretty soon? Now you know why they buried the story. They don't want people to freak. And I, I get it. They don't want people to freak. But look, you won't freak if you know what's going on. You will freak if something big happens and you're caught off guard. So if a big earthquake, now that you've heard this, if a big earthquake hits in the next few days, you'll be like, there it is. As opposed to, oh my God, what's happening? The reaction is huge. Like the difference in reaction will, could be the difference between life and death. People who don't know how to react, people who didn't expect it, spend a few seconds running around screaming earthquake or whatever, panicking, and the people who expected it are immediately taking action. That's the difference. And I don't know why they would want to hide it, but I mean, you saw it with me the past few days when I did the searches. If you didn't, go back and watch my video yesterday because I used the same search engine and the same terms. It's still saved in the search engine. And now all of a sudden, old stories are coming up that they're trying to bury and obfuscate the new stories with. It's creepy. Okay, all right. Now, on a lighter note, everyone listening who's watching live on Twitch, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done, all the subscriptions, all that that financially supports my operation. If you're watching in a premiere on YouTube, guys, thank you for subscribing. Man, you've blown up my channel. You've made a big difference. Sharing the information, getting it out, I have to premiere, but hey, better than nothing. And you know what? I think it's making a difference overall in people's preparedness. I think people are being more prepared. So thank you for sharing it, whether you're on YouTube, and thank you for supporting me if you're on Twitch. And finally, I'd like to point out, if you want to come over to Twitch, no pressure, but the live stream is running 24-7. You can watch it whether you're a subscriber or not, but if you want to get into the chat room, you, of course, have to subscribe. Okay, so thank you to all those people. I'll be back if anything else goes down. And let me end this with just a word up and much love to all my Colorado viewers. Guys, you know I used to live out there, and I'm really glad to hear that at least you got a little snow up north, which is going to put the kibosh to kick down on that fire for a little bit and maybe allow the firemen to get in there and the firefighters to get out and do a better job. Because, man, that got bad. There's no stopping it. It's dead pine forest across thousands of square miles of dead pines from those beetles. And my, we know what happens when dead pine burns. Good luck putting it out. So I'll be back if anything else goes down. We're going to upload this as a YouTube premiere, and you can watch it back with me over in the chat room and have some fun. And like I said, I'll, I'll come back at some point the next day and do an update on the hotspots as they come more into view on the satellite. Peace out, guys.